Hi everyone, Lucian Skullbusters, and today I'm going to be talking about 700pp cars in Gran Turismo 7. So, as we know, the last update pretty much killed every car on every track, every tune you've got, and you've had to retune them all. Well, the Le Mans 700pp race has been gifted an absolute legend here. And you just see from that lap time I just posted then, 3.47, that's faster than any other car I've done it in, even the Escudo. Of course, the car we're talking about is the uh, Audi Quattro Pikes Peak version, the S1. D quite a difficult car to control, but look at that. Lapped everyone, and, well, not lapped them in that sense, but smashed it. I could have got stopped at uh, 30 minutes, stopped at the line, I was that far ahead, but I thought, no, you know what? Let's go for the killer lap time, and I did manage to get a 3.47. So it is a bit of a funny one. Uh, you're best off sticking around fuel map 4 or 5 that'll get you 3 laps worth of fuel out of the car if you go for fuel map 1 it absolutely annihilates the fuel tank uh, but that's good for a last lap that so the good thing about the PP change for this car is we can mess around with suspension so that takes some of the bite out of it but it's still a very hard car to control so if any of you uh, beginner guys you know and well, you could cut your teeth on this car if you like. It's jumper, it's twitcher, but even when even when I've done all the suspension, I just think it's got a higher centre of gravity, and it just makes it throw itself round. But it is a good car to use. I like it, and it, well, it smashes all the other cars out of the way. You, they've got no chance. And then even if you're using it on fuel map, six, five, four, you're still going. 180, 190 mile an hour down the straight, so a very good car to use. Right, let's get into the tune. A very simple one, this one. We're at 699 pp, right on the edge. Uh, we've got the racing hard tyres on, because you've got to use racing tyres. Uh, 75 for uh, body height on both, uh, keeping it nice and level. Anti roll bar on the front, up to 5, back at 1. That's just to count rats all the understeer this car has. Uh, compression expansion 34 are the usual. Uh, natural frequency at 3.5. The camber is at 1.5 and I've got toes in at 0.1 on the back wheels. I've gone off them now but keep your diff numbers nice and low. And then uh, top speed, you can have 320, might be able to push up to 330. Downforce is surprisingly is max. Uh, and no ballast. I've got a high RPM uh, turbo charger, and that's all you can have. The car's kitted out. Um, just make sure you've got fully tuned suspension and transmission to be able to affect all those settings and the limited slip differential. And that'll give you a car that can do possibly do a 3.45 lap time on Le Mans. So let's get straight into it. Car skids around a lot, so. Don't turn under braking. Uh, you can accelerate out. It's, it's four-wheel drive, so it's easy to control. But just letting go of the throttle slightly around this corner here. Uh, otherwise, it'll slide around. S same again. Slow it down in before the corner. Otherwise, you get stuff like that happening. Uh, and then we're coming round to the straight. Just a slight touch on the brakes. Swing the kit. Swing it in and accelerate out. Now. We're on to the Mulsanne straight, so we've got uh, the two chicanes, uh, you're going to top up, well if you got on fuel map 1, you'll reach 200 mile an hour in this, absolutely belting it down here compared to all the other cars, I think they're doing about 170 or 160, and you're going to be braking around the 200 stop board, so there just on your left, hit the brakes, remember no turning with the brakes on, and then just letting it roll round. And then accelerate out and it's going to be the same for the next two just around the 150 200 meter mark to make sure you've got that uh braking distance so you're not turning with the brakes on so we'll just hit fast forward on this now because you know the story we're going to the corners we brake turn etc etc so coming into the uh the sharp bend here making sure you slow it right down this is why i'm saying you could get a 345 on this i make a fair few mistakes on this lap and I still get a 347, so 345, well within reach. Again, smashing it down here. 
making sure you break well within time of the corner and then coming right down to second gear for that one speeding up you get a bit of oversteer but it's no problem braking just as you come next to the Gantt, second Gantt sign and then smashing it out of this one another long straight so with the Porsche curves a lot of cars you can keep it nailed on the power uh, without worrying about it too much this you've got to slow the car right down again again it's the oversteer in the car but as long as you're going slow enough around the corner you shouldn't get too many problems you see how I turned and broke then and the car just slid but dead easy to catch it just counter steer into it and uh, the car will catch its grip back because it's four wheel drive just uh, easing on the power around the Porsche curves and then you're up and away for the last section of the lap and this is where we picked up before so yeah I hope this video has been helpful for you guys uh, I loved seeing this car back for Le Mans I, I love seeing it do so well to be honest it's a great little car uh, and hopefully you've all got it because it comes as prizes as part of the uh, cafe menu so radio thanks for watching if you did leave a like subscribe leave a comment for the algorithm and we will see you all next time